Welcome back to Idea Spotlight here on Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon, and today we've got Annabelle joining with a fantastic labyrinth project. And before we jump into the build, I want to thank Clone Army Customs, as always, for helping make these live streams possible. Check out all of their fantastic custom Star Wars minifigures and accessories at clonearmycustoms.com. Now, many fans of Jim Henson's work will recognize the build that we have for you today. This is the Labyrinth Escher Room, which uh, built out of Lego. There's just so many great details here and seeing how this came together. So I'm really excited to have the builder with me today. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. This is... Uh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. I, uh, I'm really happy to be there. It's wonderful to have you. And so why don't you start uh, start off with kind of an, an overview of the movie and kind of this scene in the movie for people who aren't familiar mm -hmm. with kind of the source material. And then we'll actually talk about the build itself. Sure. Um, this is uh, this is the SR room scene. It's um, at the end of the movie. Um, Sarah uh, finally enter the the castle beyond the Dublin city after the Dublin battle, and find herself in this enigmatic and confusing room, um, where three centers of gravity are coexisting. So this room have been um, created by Jared to confuse Sarah and stop her from uh, looking for Toby. So um, it's also very um so in the scene is explaining how brave is Sarah and how she is ready to stand at it at an staret to rescue her baby brother. Right. And so as we can see from the build here, this is obviously kind of a, a confusing looking scene when, when you first look at this build here. So now that you've kind of established uh, what's happening in the movie, talk about the build itself here and mm -hmm. the different sections of the build and kind of where, where you started with this. Sure. Um, the first idea was um, all about the movie. This is a very inspi inspiring and impressive scene. So my idea was to build something very impressive and I'll start with with the stairs. That was really the starting point. And then I start building all, all around and adding much and much more detail. Uh, it on its uh, element for the from the movie. And and I choose the three main characters. Um, so I, and then I start building the base really to make at the same time a great display piece and really uh, making something um, really trying to tax all the taller's and as much other character characters as possible. Um, yeah, that was. So the base, the base <laughs> itself is is really impressive. Before we even get to kind of the stair section, so Thank it looks you. like there's different designs kind mm -hmm. of on each side of the base. So so talk about each side here and kind of what we're looking at. Sure. Um, uh, I'll start with the idea of a a dart base to not really uh, take all the attention from the the stairs part from the build, and then. Uh, I wanted to do something a bit uh, rusted, but at the same time a bit um, uh, uh, like some jewel or something uh, really um, classy. So I choose gold, and every side do have some element in common, but the most um, each side do have. A specific element and something else from the movie. Uh, you have the front side with the uh, 13 o, o clot plot with a real like theatrical blade, what is so in the hour, but in the movie this is really a blade, so uh, a sword. And you have some feather representing the old form of Jared, uh, some titan, the movie is full of them. You have the store from the Etonet. Uh, quote from Jared, I moved the star from for no one and for sure the, the crystal ball which is really 
uh, the most recognizable uh, it tone for the movie. Uh, at the right, you have the ILD10 with the worm and the stop of T. Uh, and the stop of T, it's not actually something that you can see in the movie, but it's, it's a, a word from, from the worm. Um, so it's uh, when he say, come inside, have a nice stop of T. <laughs> um, and then at the right, you have the classic Lodo from Labyrinth. And the last side include Ludo, which is the most fan-loved character, and lot of rots. So you kind of were able to include other elements of the movie uh, in, in the in the base of this, mm -hmm. and then kind of focus on the the stairs as the main part. Yes. So it was really to include as much um, other detail, because the movie is a very detailed, and where wherever you look, you have always something new. So the base was really to add more and more um, of those details and etonate things. So we've got this uh, photo of the minifigures pulled up here. So I think this is a good time to mm -hmm. talk about them. Why don't you uh, tell us about the, the three minifigures you're able to include here? And are, is there kind of custom work that you've done to these? How, how did those come together for you? Mm -hmm. um, so I choose the three main characters because they are very um they are well represented in, in minifid form and they do not need special mold on anything um so i've made the stitters the um, printed part the image for them in uh, instape and then print them on with a part designer from studio uh so you have the well recognizable sarah with her slightly open mouth and clever eyes uh, a long black hair and a uh, white semis and printed blues. And you even have a um, plastic bracelet, which is a, a fun a fun detail to play with. And you have Toby, uh, all red pyjama with a white stripe and Jared with um, the white makeup around his eyes a crystal ball, a leather jacket, and golden pendant, and you even have his uh, Turner smile, uh, really, um, he's trying to be charming over Sarah, and uh, is, you even have two taller eyes, like uh, David Bowie in real, real life. You have so one, one blue and one orange brown. Yeah, and is, is his hairpiece one of the old Exoforce um, hairpieces? That's what that reminds me of, some of those those old uh, Exoforce sets. Yes, it's the Exoforce piece, I think. It was also a piece used in an uh, older space uh, adventure set. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you're really... Oh, and for that... Pieces. Mm -hmm. And for the accessories, I... I've included a crystal ball for Jared and the lipstick for Sarah, so she can draw um, a lipstick arrow on the floor. Yeah, well, great work with the minifigs. So now, now let's take a look at the the rest of the build that uh, kind of above the base here, and this is the the stair section, which is obviously kind of the focus of the whole creation and what first kind of attracted me to this build when I was looking through ideas. Uh, this really caught my eye, the the Escher style design. So when, when you're working on, on this type of a design, which has these stairs going in all different directions, and there's not really kind of a bottom and a top to this, where, where did you start with in terms <laughs> no. of putting this together and kind of internalizing this in your head and figuring out how it would look? Um, the first thing I start with is in this picture, you can see uh, Sarah, where she is. I really start with this... Um, this part of the stairs to give kind of a um, an idea of the dimension it will it will be. So I've thought with a part I I've thought with a part that include both arches and and stairs from uh, um, the two one on top one on above and um, and then I start with the a, a size to the build, so I've used some um, the the plates. the The floor is made with uh, three 
uh, the size of four um, plates, which are, I don't remember the number of stud, but they are uh, five by five inches. So really to give an idea of how big will be the piece. And then uh, placing uh, all the stairs, stairs one by one. Um, and uh, actually I've worked, I've started with this part, but then trying another part and doing that and just trying to do a, a very accurate representation of the size. Um, yeah. So did you That's build each of these, each part. of the staircases, kind of the sections of stairs separately and then kind of place them in to the to the larger build or are they are they fully integrated in there they are fully integrated this is actually uh the, f the only scene in the movie where uh the lab labyrinth um and the place where sarah is is not changing so in the movie you can see her turning back and find uh, a, a wall in the edge or something that was not there three seconds before but this is the only scene where they are not moving. So it's not a uh, modular build. It's really um, all, all really strong and solidly built together. Right. And, yeah. and actually, um, can I talk a bit about uh, the technique used? For sure, yeah. Um, the stairs are made using an illegal technique. Um, <laughs> actually, I just have one that I can show you here, it's a uh, double sided stairs. So they are made using um, some half uh, technet pins, some technet twin linter with a stud on top. And then they are placed uh, in the anti stud of a plate, and this piece between the anti stud of a burrito. So they can just clip like this and they are giving a really nice texture look and this early doll technique it is not putting stress on any brick like um like most common early doll technique to do two-sided parts or this the cheese piece but the problem with that is the is that they are taking more than a one by one place on the brick so it's impossible to do it for uh, plates which are one by other dimension and and um there is other technique like using some uh, magic wand uh, between two plates or a uh, butted handle but uh, there is was no other way to do um something that can really uh, place plates in a one by one space like for those stairs and there is also a lot of snotting uh, so uh, for one who don't know it's uh, it's mean stud not on top so um you see uh, at the left of sarah right now you have the arch of the doorway on the on the side uh this one is actually light uh, if you want to that uh, a rectangle in the wall and then with nothing be able to place this um, this door really on the side because uh, you have the stud on uh, the on the left and the anti stud on the right but all the the walls are made with the the stud on the top <laughs> Yeah, that's some some brilliant parts techniques there. Both the I love that stair technique you showed off. I don't think I've seen that uh, done before uh, that I can recall. So that's that's a really neat idea. And then yeah, obviously the studs not on top. Common building technique you've used really well here. And it's something you have to do when you want to get sort of variations in shapes and things that aren't just you know start from the bottom and build up. So uh, great great work with that. Is, mm -hmm. is there any other kind of pieces you use or parts techniques that that you want to point out? Uh, yes, uh, there's no other very other techniques, but the same illegal technique is used to make a tower on the both sides of the boot. And I use other kind of illegal technique like for uh, the feathers uh, on the base, which are attached by clip. 
but they are not um, like the clip normally is like that and you put a, a bore like that but actually mm -hmm. it's a bore like that to give some really um, arch to that handle um, and there is also a lot of not um, sorry um, start the knot on top uh, yes, it's nothing that needs to add all the detail for the base. Right, and I and think And there's that's... also a lot... Hmm? Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, there's also a lot of textured brit. Uh, for the pages of the boot, I used a textured brit to give some um, really pages effect. And uh, behind the worm, you can see right now that there's some um, Brit texture. In the movie, you have the worm uh, in front of a Brit wall. Yeah, and those those masonry brick bricks that always look so well went in so many different types of builds. So I think you've used them very effectively here. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's move to the top of the build now. I think you mentioned earlier the book that you have up there at the very top, and then there's also some great kind mm -hmm. of greenery um, leaf plant work at the top here. Um, and it looks like maybe you've got a lot of sideways building with that as well. So, so talk about that section of the build. Mm -hmm. um, the the heads, which have a very uh, heavy look, um, are actually to represent the the heads uh, from what the the labyrinth is made of. And the the thing with that is that I've used a lot of different pieces. Uh, flat round studs and uh, plant piece, uh, leaf and even frud. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and a lot of different pieces to really give a nice contrast between studs and flat tiles. And um, some pieces are uh, more... Um, um, light really uh, more visible than the uh, than the other to give some 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 perspective and contrast and then you have the tolerance which are obelisk with or th this is a funny piece because they are both in the labyrinth standing on top of heads and um a bit everywhere in the labyrinth, but they are also in the port where Sarah is reading her boat. So this is a mix between the two worlds. Oh, and you have also a, a little uh, Lancelo Plus uh, beside of the boat. And uh, in addition to all of those great details, I also noticed the one photo, it looks like there's kind of the the panel of one of the, the back portions kind of open up and then you can see inside a little bit to the build. Yeah, the, this photo here, yeah. Yes, um, this is because um, this part of the stairs is really uh, art. Well, this is built in studio, so I do not have all the, the piece, uh, but it's a really small place to be able to place the mini feeders. So I include a door to really um, be able to place them and display them and to allow to place easily mini feed in this isolated port. Yeah, and the, the whole build, when it comes all together, just looks so great with the stand and the stairs and then this top portion with kind of the, the hedges and everything and just kind of figuring out how the build is it, is all built is is a lot of fun. So this is such a cool looking project. Thank have, you. Have, what has the response been like from sort of Jim Henson fans as well as Lego fans? Have you had kind of support from, from all the different fan groups there as you've kind of gotten the word out about this project? Um, I've got a lot of Labyrinth fans coming just for this project. They are creating an account just for that. I, this is the only project they are supporting and they are giving themselves some Labyrinth names. So I've been supported by all the characters of the movie. Um, and this, I think this is really the, um, the public that I touched. Really, all the fan, um, really they are happy to see that uh, labyrinth is moving to a little form and they really want this set and i've also have a lot of david bowie fan who want a mini feeder of him and some <laughs> a lot of lot of people are coming for that too 
That's great. So yeah, there's there's a lot of different sort of connection points that people have to build like this. Um, for me, it's just just mm -hmm. the, the actual Lego build itself. I'm not real familiar with the source material, so just just seeing this build is what caught my eye. And I I would love this build just from a pure Lego perspective. I think the parts techniques and the the way mm -hmm. that you constructed it here would would make for an amazing creation. So I really think you've got uh, a lot of different people and fans that would be interested in this. So great work. Thanks. Oh, yeah, there's also uh, a lot of uh, Escher fans who are coming for this project. Uh, they are thinking that this is a, um, um, uh, I forgot the word, uh, this is a, um, a homage to him and they really want a set to represent all of word, his work and um, all the, the thing he he moved into movie and this painting particularly is really one that is in a lot of movie for example the stairs in Oddworld are actually based on it the exact same painting right so yeah the the, the escher fans come in as well then so that's a whole nother fan group that you can get mm -hmm. involved there so uh, <laughs> definitely everyone watching this stream make sure you look in the link or in the description of this video for a link to uh the project here and you can go over and Join uh, the almost 3,000 supporters that have already lended their support and helped this project reach 10,000 as soon as possible because I think this is really fantastic. So, uh, Annabelle, thank you for, for joining me today and thanks for taking the time to give us some more of the details behind the build. Thanks. I mean, you're welcome and thanks to, for the invitation. Um, there's a bit of uh, other thing that I thought about if you have. Uh, some of time. Yeah, for sure. Um, Go ahead. Um, um, there is a lot of tonic detail, um, and I really think this set is something that represents the movie because this is a movie very detailed, very, um, there is some very impressive thing all around, and I've really tried to to touch as much as this overwhelming um, fantasy world in this build. Um, yeah. Great, yeah, and I think those details are really visible uh, on the creation. So yeah, again, just, just great work with it and I, I'm glad you were able to include so much of that in the build. So I uh, definitely wish you the, the best of luck getting to 10,000 and I, I look forward to this hopefully becoming a set someday. So thank you. Thanks. And thank you everyone for watching. Uh, we always appreciate your support and make sure you go lend your support to this fantastic project as well. We'll see you soon.